Okay, you've all seen the El Sculpito pattern, um, and uh, we've been on slider craze and complex twist craze, and kind of the next thing that I've been focusing on is crawdads. So um, this is a pattern that I've been playing with lately. Looks great in the water, um, and we're calling it El Crasito, kind of like El Sculpito. Anyway, I have... Uh, a Gamakatsu B10S size one aught in the vise, and uh, I'm going to be tying on some uh, Vivas 10 aught thread and fluorescent orange. And the idea with this fly is it's going to ride hook point up, and so um, we're actually going to use some pretty big lead barbell eyes on it and some tungsten beads along the belly, kind of belly scratcher style. Alright, once the eyes are in there, I'm going to take some of this really thin zap glue and I'm going to turn it upside down and just dab a little bit. Uh, this stuff will penetrate every single thread wrap I did there. In fact, you've got to be really careful not to use too much or actually it will penetrate down your thread into your bobbin. Believe me, I've done it. Okay, so we're going to attach some claws on this and some antenna and maybe a little bit more of a hot spot. But the idea behind a, a crawfish when it's getting chased by a fish is it's going to sit and put its claws up in the air or up in the, in the water and try to fend off the fish. And so this, this fly does that really well in the water. So to get that those claws to stick up, I'm going to wrap down the bend of the hook. And that's why this B10S is such a good hook for this, is because there's a lot of hook gap to work with. So we're going to go down about to there. Okay, I have buggy nymph legs in root beer color. And they're kind of like a brownish orange. And the title is in right here. And I'm going to trim those off really long. We're talking maybe two to three times the length of the hook shank. And these are kind of buoyant, so they kind of just float up in, in front of the, the crawfish and really make a lot of disturbance as well. Then I've got this uh, Senyo Predator Wrap. This is the stuff with UV in it. And uh, it's, it's actually a really cool material. I've been putting it in a lot of flies. Uh, so instead of wrapping it, I'm just going to cut some off and tie it in kind of as a hot spot. So I've tied it in, I've folded it over, and now I'm going to come in and just kind of cut it at an angle. It's really cool to do this with shrimp patterns as well. Okay, the next thing is I'm going to tie in some claws, but uh, in order for those claws to stay out to the side, I mean, the claws are made out of rabbit. The rabbit re really gets flexible in the water. Um, so in order to keep those claws out to the side, I'm going to take some of my semi-seal dubbing, which is what the, the majority of this fly is made of. I'm just going to take some of that and just make a ball right here. Uh, this would be a good opportunity to add another hot spot, like if you wanted to do... Uh, a bright orange ball of dubbing or something like that. But I'm just going to use the crawdad colored semi seal. So just wrap it up on top of itself, making a pretty pronounced ball right there. And I, I messed around with a lot of the, the, the rabbit strips that we have and that I have in my, my stock. And I found that this UV2 dose gelled rabbit in sculpin color actually makes a really cool looking uh, claw. And I'm going to tie the back of those in. So you'd think that those might make really short claws, but I think that a lot of the crayfish patterns that we see out there have claws that are too big. Um, fish are going to want to go after maybe immature crayfish that don't have fully developed claws. 
So there I've got the, the claws tied in. You can see how that, that ball of dubbing keeps them nice and separated. Okay, at this point, I'm going, going to rotate the, the hook back in the vise how it should be. I'm going to build up some thread right here to make kind of a ramp so I can wrap my palmer chenille. I'm going to take root beer palmer chenille, tie it in, and just wrap a little bit forward. Uh, palmer it a little bit up the body. Okay, at this point I'm going to make some custom eyes for this fly. Uh, the eyes really give it a, a buggy appearance in the water. Okay. okay, so we're going to make the eyes for this fly. Um, what I have is I've got loon thick and thin. Uh, the thin is in one of these loon mixing cups and I've put some black powder into it. Not like the black powder from a rifle, but the black uh, pigment that you can buy from loon. And uh, the thick is just left plain. So I have these in the cups and you can see that I've just taken like a little toothpick and mixed up the black. And you'll see why I use thin with the color and thick clear. It's, it's actually, there is a reason for it. And I also just have some 40 pound monofilament that I got just from my local tackle shop. And uh, I'm going to just cut those with these... Uh, rising big nippa that's you can see the rattle bass has made his way onto this and these uh, are the only tool with jaws as sharp as a rattle bass anyway so i'm just going to cut off a few sections of this monofilament and i'm going to take a lighter and i'm going to burn those to make kind of a pronounced ball the ball doesn't have to be perfect all the ball is going to do in this case is just keep the epoxy from slipping off. Um, so I'll just show you how to make one of these eyes and then we'll do the other one off camera. But anyway, I've got my Loon Mega Light. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to come in here and the reason I don't, I don't uh, put the pigment in all of the epoxy is if I get a really big chunk or, or a really big round eye, with this black uh, pigment in it, it actually blocks the UV light and so it won't cure down to the center. So you have an, a hard outside edge of, of the eye and the inside will still be liquid. So yeah, it'll still fish, but it just won't be near as durable. So what I do is I'll just take, take the mono and dip it in to the, to the glue and you can see that it's just a little bit on the eye and I'll cure that. Just kind of rotate it in my fingers and then I'll do that again with the the clear and I'll hit it again so you can see I'm just building up little bit layer by layer and I'll usually do that about if I'm doing a big bug this bugs a one knot that we're tying I usually do dip that three times in the thick so we're looking at about this big So that creates a nice round eye. And then I'm going to dip this just one time in the in the thin with the black stuff on it. Make sure I get enough in there. And because that's thin, it's a little bit more runny, so I kind of turn it upside down. Uh, move it all around to get it nice and formed and then I'm going to hit that with the light. Now the the possibilities are endless with this stuff. I mean you can put a little bit of glitter in with the black. You can do them all different colors but that's just a real simple way to make an, uh, an eye that's going to last forever. Um, what I typically do is I'll, I'll mix up a whole bunch of this stuff. Uh, this is just a little bit for demonstration purposes but I'll mix up a whole bunch of it and then you can just put the, the UV resin aside and if you want to make more eyes down the road you've got it already mixed up and you don't have to waste any of it. The final step to this is we're just going to take a little bit of flow and just take the tack off of these eyes. That or you could 
you know, you could technically put these on a wheel and put some hard head on them or, you know, put some uh, Sally Hansen's or, or anything like that. But I just use Flow. I mean, technically you could have another mixing cup with Flow in it just to speed up the process. All right, so there's a completed eye. So here we have the eyes, and I, I'm going to want that eye to, to ride about like this. Maybe not where a natural crayfish eye is, but again, it's just all about um, making a fly that, that is a little bit exaggerated. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of these little barb crushers or, or forceps, and I'm going to take that eye where I want it to be bent or kind of come up from the body of the fly and I'm going to bend that back and what that does is it creates a nice little 45 degree angle in that monofilament and that's where I'm going to tie that that in so there I've got both the eyes tied in I'll just come in here with these nippers and nip those off Now because we're going to add some tungsten beads to the belly of this fly, we're going to take some articulation wire and tie it in similar to the, the belly scratcher minnow that you can, you, you can see on our channel. Um, but I'll tie that down and then you double over the articulation wire on top of itself and tie it down again. If not, though, these tungsten beads will fall off and dab it again with some of this little uh, really fine super glue. Okay, so we're going to create the body of this fly and I'm going to use uh, Arizona Simi Seal. Um, and one of the things I've been dealing with is putting a lot of pressure on these dubbing loops and sometimes they've been breaking on me, which really makes me mad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap my dubbing loop twice around my finger and then lock the back end of that loop, tie it down. So basically now I have a double enforced, double reinforced uh, dubbing loop. Stick my dubbing twister in there. And then you see how I, how I left a little bit of space behind the eyes for some, some rubber legs. So when you wrap the body up, keep in mind we're only wrapping just a little bit so it doesn't take a lot of dubbing. The more dubbing you have on this fly, the more chance you're going to take of it not writing quite right. Uses a lot of dubbing but don't use too much. So once I've got it twisted up I'm just going to brush it out really lightly before I wrap it forward. And I'll brush it out again. So you notice on this fly again, it's just kind of an exaggeration of a crawfish. I'm not going to put any shell back on the top. Um, in the past, I've put shell back on and put some epoxy and done a, a lot of work to them. But you know, as, as some of you know, I fish a lot of conventional jigs. I, I fish conventional gear a lot, and you know, some of the stuff that represents a crawfish in that, you know spectrum is is really exaggerated so not too worried about not putting a shell on this that's just one other way that um, uh, being a gear chuck and hillbilly makes you a better fly fisher and fly tire all right now what I'm going to do is take uh, three 3.8 millimeter tungsten beads really doesn't matter what color I suppose if you had copper that would work these are uh, gunmetal or black nickel colored. I'm going to string those on the articulation wire and just pull that wire up to where the thread is. And once my uh, 
wires in place I'm just going to double that back over and catch it and tie it down so those beads will ensure that this thing it sinks like a rock like you need a crayfish to do and uh, it will ride right up over stumps and all that kind of stuff too All right, now we're getting kind of more like the El Sculpito pattern. All we're going to do now is add some uh, some silicone streamer legs or some silly legs or whatever you call them and uh, add a little bit of a head and a weed guard. So instead of using the whole hank, I'm going to take about two thirds of it and I'm going to use about that much material. So this, the tie-in method on this is a little bit different. I'm, I'm essentially going to tie it in and then pull it over and, and uh, tie the same chunk of material on the other side. So I'm going to pinch these fibers on the side of the hook nearest you. It's tied in like this. Then I'm going to take these fibers and pull them over and tie them in on the other side. If that makes any sense. So just about like this. And the reason I didn't use the, the, the buggy nymph legs for this is because these are a little bit uh, too fine for crayfish legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those and I'm going to trim them uh, maybe right about behind where they meet the eye of the, the, the epoxy eye that we, we made. So there we are. Now we're going to make another dubbing loop. Before we do anything with this loop, we got to do something about these legs. Take a hair clip. All right, so now again, just build a loop. So this dubbing loop is, is also pretty sparse. Um, it's not going to be nearly as thick of a head as the Sculpito has. But a crayfish does have a lot of action in its tail. And you know, even though this th these fibers aren't going to all be underneath the fly, it's going to still move around and breathe. Um, so that's why I do the head this way, or the tail. So three wraps or so behind the lead, and then I'm going to figure eight in between that lead and end with a few wraps of simi in front of the lead. We're going to brush this out so it looks like Tina Turner for you kids born in the 90s. YouTube that. Okay, so just kind of brush it out like that. Then when we release the dogs, it should look about like this. Okay, so now you have a, a choice. You can either just leave it be or you can add a weed guard. And just for demonstration purposes, we'll add a weed guard to it. So again, I've got roughly 40 pound monofilament. Um, you can do it with anything as light as 20 pound. And see how there's a little bit of a curve to that monofilament. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it so that I'm bending away from that curve and then I kind of bite down on that uh, on this little loop to create a V. So I'm going to take this this V like this and I'm just going to stick it right under that hook eye and I'm going to wrap those in place and so once those are in there you know you can crank it down pull those forward so you can get up behind those with with your thread okay so that's why I use the orange thread you might be able to see a little bit through the body but it also kind of adds a, a hot spot on the fly so two last steps here uh, first I'm going to use flow to seal up that head 
And the reason I'm using that instead of a super glue is I want it to kind of lock those weed guards in where they, they should be. Red's nice and fluorescent. And then you could either just trim these weed guards um, just straight across like, like this. Or what I like to do is I like to come in here and kind of protect that hook a little bit more. So I'll come in here with these, um, these barb mashers. Okay, so I've just made uh, some little bends in the monofilament with some barb mashers and then just kind of trim them to, to length, however you like it. And that's a good little weed guard that'll keep that safe from the nasty snags. So, um... Anyway, that's basically it. That's the crossito and uh, really good crayfish-like action in the water. And as you can see, it's actually a pretty basic tie. Tie some up, let us know how you do, and subscribe to our YouTube channel or Curtis will have his cat come over to your house and barf on your floor.